Thank you, gentlemen. This is rumor control. Here are the facts. dating isn't working out for us girls if you know you know so these guys are going on these dating apps and these younger girls are looking fucking fabulous contouring it's not fair we didn't have that we're looking ratchet and we looked young but these girls look old as hell so they're going out plowing all of these little chickadees Chickadees? Hmm. Sounds like a TikTok video. <laughs> Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome to another installment of Chick Talk. And I mean that C H I K T O C K. The show that exposes the chicks of Chick Talk, right? You guys asked for it. You wanted it. You wanted the best and you got the best. Okay. Well, I'm going to uh, give you some quick hit videos today. Uh, our first up is this young lady right here. Uh, let's see if I can put her back up. There you go. Now, nah, much better, much better. Uh, I, if you really want these girls' addresses on TikTok, I will be happy to supply them to you, but I'm not even going to put them in the description. Uh, you guys, if you really want to know where they are, yeah, I think you can probably even see the, the address right there. So, um, here we have an older, an older gal, <laughs> relatively speaking. Um, she's just admitted that she's in her thirties and she is a little bit upset that, um, wow, lo and behold, she's having a really tough time in the sexual marketplace competing against the young chippies. Let's continue. Well, we get screwed because here's the deal. They don't need to res be respected. They don't need to be taking on fancy dinners. They can just go out and pick and choose all these beautiful little girls walking around with their fat asses. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Are you telling me that women between the ages of, let's say, oh, 18 and mm, 28, they've got their pick of the litter? They got their pick of the guys? Imagine that. Do you suppose this girl was one of those girls back in the day? This is the voice of the epiphany phase, by the way. Actually, I should say this is actually the voice of the post wall phase. <laughs> Um, she's already said that she's in her 30s right here. So she's a little bit upset that uh, the competition has suddenly gotten a little bit stiff. Uh, as I've said before, uh, in the epiphany phase, this is when women uh, suddenly realize or they, they acknowledge, right? They cognitive, cognitively acknowledge the fact that they can no longer compete at the same level that they used to. And this is, uh, you know, this is one of many videos uh, on TikTok uh, of women bemoaning the same thing. Uh, they do in their own, in their own special way. And, and that's what this, uh, this young lady is. Uh, young lady. This, <laughs> this uh, post 30 lady is talking about. Meanwhile, we were waiting, you know, and we've already passed the little host stage. We're not having sex. So, we're not putting out, but they are. And these men, why would they want to settle down with us when they can fuck a different girl every fucking night? Men are pigs. Yes. It's all your fault, gentlemen. You are a pig. You are a pig for choosing the women that are not her. <laughs> there is a, um, gosh, there is a, 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 a very old post. Actually, I should probably put this post in, um, in the description. I think I will. Um, Roycey, the inimitable Roycey, the real Roycey, not necessarily the artiste version of Roycey, but back in 2000, I believe 2009 or 2008, eh, maybe even later than that. He had a, um, he had a, uh, an essay called the difficulty of gaming women by age bracket. And let me tell you, that was a very, um, eye-opening and controversial, uh, like, uh, rage baiting, um, uh, essay for like a, a blog post basically is what it was. And it was essentially uh, breaking down how difficult it is to game women uh, at various ages. And you might think that um, 
that maybe being um, like say let's say the twenty. I don't know exactly what the breakdown was. I do. I do know there was eighteen to twenty four, eighteen to twenty five, something like that. That was easier. Those that area, like if you're if you're hitting, gentlemen, if you are hitting the let's say eighteen to twenty four demographic, and uh, whatever, whatever your whatever your preference is, most men, of course, prefer the the women who are between twenty two and twenty three years old, somewhere around there. Uh, statistically, we know this. Uh, thank you, Dataclism, that, that great book. Um, However, that happens to be a, a fairly easy demographic to game, or at least it used to be anyways, according to, um, to Royce. Uh, relatively speaking, because right around the time that a woman hits 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, I believe he, he pegged this at about 26 to 33, somewhere around there. He was, it was, there were much broader demographics back then. And uh, he, uh, I think one of the, um, one of the, the observations that he had, he and his crew had made back then was that it is more difficult to game women right around the the, uh, the epiphany phase than at any other time. So prior to acknowledging that a woman can no longer sort of compete at the same level uh, between like say 29 and 31, that's, that's the epiphany phase according to my book anyways, um, it's much easier to game women between 18 and 24 because you're looking at uh, you're looking at a different set of priorities. Um, you know, women in that age demographic tend to be looking for just for looks at that point. It's just, all it is is about you know alpha seed, right? It's only about the uh, the short term sexual at that stage. And so, if you can cater your game, or if you can leverage that game to um, to that particular demographic, then you do you can do pretty well, particularly if you're an older guy. Um, if you happen to be in that same demographic, one of the things that's really tough, I think, for guys right now is that they tend to think that they should be able to do better with women in their own peer group. And what what I mean by that is within like say three to three to five years, uh, give or take a little bit, um, within their like according to their own age, like comparative to their own age. And I think that there is a, a misnomer about that. I, I should probably end up doing a full episode uh, when it's not a Chick Talk video. I'll do a full episode on um, how guys can leverage um, their game versus age. Uh, in this case, however, the prime demographic, the hardest demographic is actually the demographic that she is in right now, which is right around like say 29 to 33, 34. Because women are very particular at that age and we can see this uh, reflected in, um, in today's red pill, right? In today's red pill shows, red meat for the red pill shows, where we've got uh, multiple women coming on uh, at various ages, of course, but right around that time is when women tend to be much more particular. And you will rarely hear women say, oh, men are pigs when they're 18 to 24 or 26, somewhere around there. You'll rarely hear that come out of a woman's mouth, a young woman's mouth. You only hear that right around 29 to 31, 33, somewhere around there. That's when you will hear statements like men are pigs. Uh, men only want to get with hot chippies. Uh, is it all about sex? I'm going to make him wait. I'm going to do things the right way. You'll hear those things. Uh, you'll also hear women bemoan the fact that they can't find any good guys. You don't hear, you generally don't hear women who are between the ages of 18 and about 24 talking about that, worrying about that. Oh, where are all the good guys? They don't care where the good guys are. They're there to have a good time. The only time women really care about where the good guys are and their long-term security is when they know that the lights are going to come on at the club very soon. And usually, and I mean that metaphorically, um, and that's usually between the ages of 29 and 33, 34 years old. This woman, uh, this <laughs> post wall woman, let's just say, um, is now experiencing that and is the voice of the epiphany phase. Where are all the good guys? Where are uh, the nice guys? Where are all the guys who wanted to get with me when I was back in 23 and I was young and hot too? She was exactly the same way as the women that she's bemoaning uh, that guys only want to have anything to do with. And now she thinks that guys are uh, in control of the game. And th while that may be true for the demographic of guys that she wants to get with, it is in no way true of the guys, and I'm going to show you another TikTok or yeah, TikTok video here that sort of reinforces this. It is in no way representative of men 
that she wants to get with. So at 33 years old, a woman is generally, generally speaking, is looking for a guy who's anywhere between three to seven years older than she is. And right around there, it's usually three to five. And she's looking for a guy who's already made. She's looking for a turnkey relationship. She's looking for the guy who's already crossed the finish line. And so when she cannot find that, and she sees that the guys that she wants to get with, the guys who are the hot, quote unquote, high value guys, and let's just let's just break that down. That's that's alpha men. When she sees those guys going for much younger women, the kind of <laughs> the kind of women that she used to be, that's when women complain about those things because now suddenly it seems when when they're when women are looking at at men in their age cohort that are now in their mid thirties and are beginning if they're still single, they're still beginning to hit their stride. Of course, they, it seems very unfair because the selection priority has now switched. Women who are 22, 23 years old have the highest sexual selectivity of any age that they will ever be. Men, on the other hand, if you've made the most of yourself and you've, made, you've become a high value guy, you've become an alpha male, you've been, whatever you want to call it, you've made the most, you've maximized your potential, and you're now hitting 35, 36 years old, those guys are not looking for a 33, 32 even a 31 year old woman they're looking for a woman who she used to be who isn't complaining about where are the nice guys who isn't they're looking for younger hotter tighter because now they are in fact in a better position for sexual selectivity if they're smart and more and more men are becoming more and more aware so yes i understand your frustration um whatever your name is here young blonde girly girl um because now it seems like men are pigs. Men just, they're such pigs. Well, they're pigs for what? For having the sexual selectivity that you had when you were 22, 23 years old. They're just enjoying that same selectivity because now the shoe is on the other foot. So there you have that. Now, I'm going to show you one more here. Now, you'll have to, I apologize because I have to remove this from the studio. And then I'm going to put the next one in. And this is sort of a reinforcement of that same message. So, and boy, is this, is this a winner or what? Where do you see this chick? First, I'm just going to say, do what you want. I really don't care. It doesn't affect me. But don't fool yourself into thinking that having a high body count makes you manly. Literally anybody could do that. Literally anyone can do that. Black pill, incel, loser, MGTOW, whatever, like extreme, okay, I shouldn't say MGTOW, whatever. The, the loser end of the spectrum. Any, literally anybody can do that. What's wrong with you guys? Anybody can go can go get a high body count. Well, you can, I suppose. She's not in, entirely incorrect. You could go do that. I mean, come to Nevada. I'll be happy to get you laid. It's no problem. Bring $500 to Reno, Nevada, and I guarantee you, you will get laid. So in a sense, she's, she's, you can always pay for it. Uh, transactional sex is actually probably the only means to sex that most guys are ever going to have. But isn't it interesting that it seems as if any guy can do that? Well, when you get to be a little older, and she does, she strikes me as being about 25. I don't know exactly what her age is. She might be even a little bit older than that. I've seen some of her other videos, and she's very, she's extremely full of herself. But um, in this instance, it's this presumption that betrays the 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 latent message or the latent purpose of this entire video here so let's let's continue now remember her premise is this guys can get laid no matter what it doesn't matter a high body count is not that big a deal because anybody can do it she's what she's doing is she's using female experience in a female frame of reference and she's trying to apply it to all guys well it probably seems that way not unlike the other girl who was just saying, hey, uh, men can, you know, men are pigs because the ones that I want to get with who are older, who have been, who are made, you know, the turnkey relationship, those guys seems like they're in a position of power because they're in a position of sexual selectivity. So let's listen to what the rest of her, her video is here. That's like saying it's manly to eat cake. Literally anyone can do that. Some key characteristics of a high value manly man or honestly a high value woman as well is discipline, dedication, and loyalty. So you Hmm. Kind of like the same things that guys are looking for when, let's say on Fresh and Fit, when Fresh says, hey, uh, what do you bring to the table? No, you don't hear, you don't hear those qualities coming from a woman. Rarely. I mean, occasionally you do, like from the rare specimen that happens to be on one of those shows, right? When you ask a woman, hey, what do you bring to the table besides your cooter? 
right? What do you bring to this this table besides your your sexuality? Because that's primarily what what attracts men, right? Uh, what is that? She's got to be hot. She's uh, you know what unlimited access to unlimited sexuality. She's got to be hot and she's got to be available. Those are really the two prime requisites, I think, for for most men. After that, then we can talk about other things and we can talk about other value added beyond those. Those are the, these are the, my, this is the basic starting package, you know, sexuality and availability. Anything else after that tends to be icing on the cake, tends to be value added. Now, when you say, hey, what do you bring to the table besides your holes? You know, and and to paraphrase Patrice O'Neill, haha, see, I do talk about Patrice O'Neill. Uh, what are you besides a set of holes, lady? Well, uh, how about um, loyalty, you know, commitment, all this other, all these great esoteric, ephemeral, you know, well, esoteric, uh, ephemeral, you know, higher order thinking comes from, you know, comes from that she expects from from men. Well, we don't hear that from women. No, instead we say, we, we have women say, well, I make my own money. I'm a professional. I will, I'll back him up in his job. <laughs> I'll back him up for all of the things that I need. I'll support him. As long as what I'm supporting benefits me at some point, usually that's how it breaks down. And I will challenge you to watch any episode of like Kevin Samuels or Fresh and Fit, or there's there's actually a few others now that are starting to, to pick up on this formula as well. I'm using those two channels, but there's there's other ones that there's other channels that are following this template now. But if you go and you look at them and you see the women on there, when they say, here's what I bring to the table, and if they ever say support, it's almost unanimously whatever universally whatever that guy is doing she's that she's willing to support it's usually something that's going to uh indirectly or directly benefit her so if the guy says yeah hey i'm into comic book collecting that's not something she's probably going to support but if the guy says yeah i'm on my game and i'm an entrepreneur blah 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 that, yeah well then she wants to be a part of that because that is a a positive association on her own ego However, we rarely hear dutiful, we rarely hear feminine, we, ra- we rarely hear loyalty, all of the four little well, runoff things that she's talking about. We rarely hear that from women when they try to describe themselves as something that's got, they've got more than just a cooter. You'll find that a high value man or woman will be loyal to one partner. So again, do it. Why? Why? Why do you presume that? A high value person is going to be loyal to one partner. Now, we talk about this all the time, and this is actually kind of where I wanted to... Actually, let me finish this up here. What you want to do, I ain't going to judge you. But don't try to act like you're impressing anyone, because you're not. Okay. Okay, so, now let me pull her out. All right. So, what she's presuming... Now, this is the body count thing, and I I get this quite a bit, okay? And I know that... and, And here's today's serious part of today's video, Okay. A lot of times when when I'm listening to Myron or I'm listening to some of these other guys uh, or even even Kevin Samuels or you might even hear, uh, I, I think even Rich Cooper will say something like this, is, is that you know high value men deserve to cheat. They get to cheat. That's just what they get because they're high value men. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I don't get a, get a show like a full, maybe I'll do a live stream about this on a Sunday show and a longer format show um, where we discuss um, the idea of a poly, I guess it would be not polyamory, but like poly polygony in this case, right? Um, I have just uh, read through a Quillette article uh, that came out yesterday, uh, and that being June 28th, uh, 2021. Um, and I'm looking at this and it's talking about like sort of the dating market and a lot of the stuff that, that I talk about quite a bit. Now they get a lot wrong. Simply because they don't, they're the whoever I forget whoever the uh, the writer of this um, this article is um, simply just doesn't have the frame of reference. It doesn't have the uh, the understanding of the red pill or or the manosphere or or dating or any of that kind of stuff. Like you, they want to talk about chads, chads, dads, and hypergamy, right? And they completely butcher hypergamy. It's always it's always the uh, the long term commitment side of things. It's it's always the beta buck side of hypergamy. It's never the alpha seed side, and. But as a result of that, women cannot find a marriageable partner anymore. Just the other girl, that the blonde girl that was on here, she was very upset, of course, that she can't find a marriageable partner because all those guys are pigs now. and Or they are economically undesirable. They, so women are presented with two, if you've seen my Twitter feed, you'll understand what I'm about to say. Um, women are presented with two choices right now. And the first one is share a high-value male. And share a, an alpha male 
Find a guy who's hot, but be prepared to share him with other women. This is polygyny or polygamy, yeah, called polygyny, or you can call it polygamy, whatever. It is one man, many women, but it is not it is not initiated through patriarchy so much as it is initiated or you know, through the guy, like the guy's not doing the initiation. It's not initiated by the man, it's initiated by the women. Because the women who can get with that guy are going to want to compete for that guy because that guy is exceedingly rare right now. Who is not rare is the 80 percent or guys, or you can even make the case for 90 percent or guys who are not high value or, or certainly within that 20 percent threshold that are lower value. So that's the other choice. You have the choice of sharing the high value alpha or you can get with the dutiful, loyal one man, one woman, very committed, maybe old school beta male who wants to present the idea that to be an alpha male is to just stick with one woman all the time, right? That's what you have to do. Now, I'm not saying that's that's right or that's wrong. I'm just saying that those are the choices that women are presented with right now. So ladies, you're presented with getting with the high value guy in the hopes that maybe you're going to beat out all these other bitches to get with that one guy and lock him down, which and in some cases, maybe the fact that he has many women, that's part of his appeal. And that's one of the reasons why you want to get with him in the first place. And then second of all, you can settle. You can settle for a guy who is a less than optimal partner, a guy who maybe you hope will maximize his potential at some point. Like maybe you see, oh, this guy has some potential. Maybe when he gets to be 36, 38, whatever, then he'll develop into that high value guy. And hopefully because you've invested all this time and you took a chance on this guy that he's going to be loyal to you and, and probably will because the guy's more than likely a beta male. He's in that 80% that is the unattractive 80% of guys. Now, it is not men who are initiating this new poly thing. They're not initiating this polygamous, polygamous um, setup where women are, would rather share an alpha male than be saddled with a faithful loser. That's, that's a Royce quote, by the way. Or excuse me, no, that's a Pook quote. I'm, I'm quoting Pook. Okay. Women would rather share a successful alpha male than be saddled with a faithful loser. And today... Women do not have to be saddled with a faithful loser, or they believe that they are entitled to the to that hot alpha guy that he's doing, that they know is just around the corner. And yet, we look at the little blonde girl that we had on here just a moment ago, talking about how she can't find the right guy, or all guys are pigs, and they only want to get with the hot young chippies. Yes, of course they do because they can. Women don't want a man to cheat, but they love a man who could cheat. They love the man that other men want to be and other women want to bang, okay? That is straight out of book two, right? Whenever you hear, I know Myron talks about this all the time, but that is straight out of the rational male preventive medicine. I can show you the page where I put that down there, okay? Whenever you hear somebody say, uh, what was it? The Pook quote, right? Uh, women would rather share a successful alpha than be saddled with a faithful beta. That's Pook. That's not me. That's not me. Um, however, men would or women would rather get with a, a, um, a man that other men want to be and other women want to bang. It's pre-selection. It is uh, pre, uh, pre-selection and it is social proof. And that social proof reflects on that woman's uh, capacity to get with a guy like that. When nothing else will do, when women don't want to settle for less, they ha are forced into a position where they're doing the choosing of sharing that man. It's not the guy who's this, you know, high poobah who's got this harem going. Women form their own harems for that one guy. In fact, it's it's almost expected for that. So when this chick says, oh, well, you know, a high value man stays with one woman. Yeah, especially when you need it the most. That's when we redefine this. And women like this girl right here. Let's put her back in. Okay, first, I'm just going to say, do what you want. I really don't care. It doesn't affect me. But don't fool yourself into thinking that having a high body count makes you manly. Okay, this chick right here is in for a rude, rude awakening because she really desperately wants a high value guy to be committed to her. Now, she's cute. She's hot. She goes to the gym. I've looked at her other, her other TikTok stuff, and she can probably command that interest for now. And at some point, she's going to have to consolidate. And uh, ladies, if you're watching this video right now, consolidating on the right guy at the right time is crucial. 
Because most guys who realize and understand their own value are not going to just settle for one chick. And it's not a deserves thing. Deserves got nothing to do with it. It's not about being hubristic. It's just simple pragmatism. Why would they get with you? Why would the guy who is a high value, I mean, the, this is the constant question everybody asks on all of these shows, why would a guy want to get with you? You're average at best. This girl's not average at best. She's definitely above average. And if you see her other things, she's, she's actually pretty, she's fit. She looks good. But again, that's perishable. And she understands that the clock is ticking. And when women put TikTok videos out about this kind of stuff, it means that there is some sort of angst going on in the background. Like, I, I know I need to cash out. I know I need to get out of the, I know I need to leave the club before the lights come on. I know I need to cash out my chips before the casino closes. And when that guy, when there's no guy that's willing to take her hand and lead her out of the club or help her go cash in her chips before the casino closes, that's when, that's when they, you get TikTok videos just like this. <laughs> that's when chicks are like, oh, okay, you know, I, you, here's, here's a message to guys. Like, who do you think that this message is directed for? It's not just her just like mouthing off to herself. Like when women are doing TikTok videos and they're just, they're doing one of these things. They're like, oh, hey, okay. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. And it's, it, they're, they're not talking to themselves. There is an audience that they think is on the other side of the cell phone camera. Who is that audience in this case? Who is she, who is she manifesting all of this to? And why? That's one of the most fascinating things. And this is one of the reasons why I, I threw up the, uh, the Chick Talk uh, logo and tried to make sort of a series out of this, I guess, um, is because there is a lot of, let's say, underlying latent messages in all of these. So it's usually angst. It's usually stress. It's, you know, what, you know, it's women going, you know, hey, ladies, can we talk? No, it's, either, that's not, it's not to the ladies. Because the ladies, it's like preaching to the choir. They're hoping a guy, and, and probably so, will be watching this and go, hmm, yeah, it seems like it's a, a, a dating profile. Oh, that's what she's looking for right now. She's saying what, what women of this caliber are saying when they go and they, they put out videos like this is it's not, ladies, can we talk? It's, gentlemen, here's what I'm looking for. That's what this is really all about. Want to know how I know? Well, we're going to come to today's third and final um, third and final TikTok video here today. And this is your bonus. There's your it's bonus round. Here we go. Uh, let me grab this. That's the video file. You know, when I do multiples of these, it's a little bit difficult. That's not it. And that's it. Here we go. And away we go. People be like, you shouldn't want a relationship so bad. You should just love yourself. Like, yeah, I love myself, but who's gonna eat my <laughs> Like, I need someone to <laughs> Shut the fuck up with all that self-love bullshit. Like, I need someone to <laughs> People be like, you <laughs> Okay, there's your, there's your fire round. There's your bonus round, all right? <laughs> so we've heard from, uh, it, it's almost, it's interesting. Remember when I tell you guys about how women have no problem with cognitive dissonance. It's not a problem for women to deal with two, com two competing uh, influences or two competing ideas like that, that diametrically oppose the other. And it's even easier for women to process and just either ignore or just simply laugh at and, and laugh it off cognitive dissonance. And it's e the easiest way to do that. And the, I should say the easiest situation, of course, is if one of those two things applies to one side of hypergamy. Alpha seed, beta need. I'm trying to be nice. I'm not I'm trying to swear on this one. Okay. So alpha seed, beta need. So what we've looked, what we've looked at here, let's just sum things up because we're almost at the 30 minute mark and I didn't want to go too long. But what you've just seen here is the alpha seed side. Just now, that's the alpha seed side. I need somebody to at me. Um, and then there's also the beta need side which is, of course, I need the guy who's going to be dependable, loyal. There's a one woman kind of thing. He's going to stick with me because that's in her interest at that particular time. When that woman is much younger, that's when we get, uh, we get this girl, right? That's when we get. You shouldn't want a relationship so bad. You should just love yourself. Like, yeah, I love myself, but who's going to eat my. Right. That's when you get this girl right here. 
that that's the voice. <laughs> Whereas our first two girls were the voice of the wall, well, post wall in one case, uh, but the the voice of the epiphany phase. This is the voice of the pre epiphany phase, or this is the voice of the id rather than the ego. And I know I'm getting Freudian here, but you you kind of get what I mean. This is the hedonistic. He's got to be hot. He's got to be fun. Uh, I was drunk. He was cute. And one thing led to another hot guy in the foam cannon party. There's your reference for today. So that's that's number that's chickadee number one. And then the voice of the epiphany phase and the voice of the, uh, you know, sort of post wall phase or the fast approaching epiphany phase is the other two girls on Tommy Laren. If you go back and <laughs> keep returning to her, but like that was a, a year ago, it's at, that's the voice of the epiphany phase or just prior to the epiphany phase. And that's the voice of stress. That's the voice of, Oh my God, I need long-term security. And I don't know how I'm going to manage this because all men are pigs, right? All men are infantile and they just want to get with the young. Well, what, what did she say? The Tatiana's, right? The Tatiana's, the girls who are the Tinder girls, right? They just, guys just want those. No, the guys you want, want those girls, the guys that you want to get with the guys that you ignored who were nice guys and were ready to settle down or ready to sort of like start something with you. They were ready to, for you to make a bet of your sexual marketability in your younger years on their uh, uh, on their bet as I'm going to be something I make something of myself by the time I hit 30 and you're going to need me more than uh, uh, you're going to need me more than I'm going to need you. This is the cardinal rule of relationships in any relationship, whether it's family or personal relationships. The one in that relationship with the most power is the one who needs the other the least. When women are at 22, 23, 24, gentlemen, and you're about that same age, they need you the least because everything comes to them if as long as they maintain the hot, sexy you know, look and attitude and everything else. Women at, are at the peak of their power right around that time. Yes, that's why particularly guys who are incels, particularly the black pill guys, particularly the doomers, the Spurg Tower, or whatever it is. Yes, those women look very, very powerful on OnlyFans. And they are because they are at the peak of their power. And when you keep recycling one for the other, it's this constant state of, oh, women are always in power, right? Well, guess what? That dynamic shifts when you get to be, if you've made enough of yourself and made the most of yourself and you are 35, 36, 37 years old and you maximize your potential, then guess what? You're the hot guy. You're the guy who's the, who has more control. Cardinal rule of relationships. They need you more than you need them. The, the, the trick of all this, the game in all of this is that women never want you to know that. So that when you get to be 33 and you're still young and dumb and stupid, Stupid. When you're so stupid about and you're you, you're not aware of your own value or your potential value, you are a perfect mark for women who need you the most at that time, and they want you to believe that you don't have any power, because women women get to women get to control everything. She has the vagina, so she makes the she makes the decisions. I've seen T-shirts that say that, and guys are like, oh, happy wife, happy life. You know what you, what mama wants, mama gets right, and they will say that before there's a mama or a girl even on the scene. That's when you are putting yourself at your own disadvantage. When I talk about men gaslighting themselves, that's exactly what I mean. Women need you to be dumb at the right time. So bear that in mind. That's what these TikTok videos are about. I can go make fun of them, but you always are going to get sizzle. You're always going to get steak with the sizzle on TikTok videos. Um, I am Rolo Tomasi. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, keep these coming, man. The only reason I'm able to do these is because you guys flow me these... Uh, um, these girls, uh, I call this one girls gone mild because these are the girls like when they, when they seem like if they're at the apogee of their power and they're sexy and fun and flirtatious and everything else, they end up being the other girls, the blonde girl. They end up being the other girl who's worried about finding a guy who's going to be like faithful and, and loyal and committed. There's a time in women's lives where that's a priority and there's times when it's not. And ladies, the further we go, the longer we, 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 we longer this sexual marketplace is defined by this, the, lo the more you're going to be sharing that hot alpha guy with other girls in the hopes that you're going to lock that guy down. And the odds are you're probably not going to be the one to do it. So there you have it. I didn't mean to be depressing at the end, but that's it. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.